Hi there. In this video I'm going to show you how to use web components in an Angular application. The application that we're going to build is a simple form for entering first name and last name and some logic for adding that to a data grid. We're going to look at how we import the components, how we add polyfills to support older browsers, and how we uh, integrate these with Angular. As the base of our project, I will create a new project with the Angular command line. I'll just answer the defaults to the questions. All right, with the project initialized, let's go into the folder. And then open it in your editor. Here I'm using VS Code. Now the first thing I want to do is install the components themselves through NPM. All right, with those installed, let's go and tell tsconfig, tell the TypeScript compiler that we're going to use some JavaScript here. So we'll add in the compiler options, we'll add allow JS to true. Then we'll go into our app module. What we need to do is install a custom element schema. This is something that tells Angular that some of the custom element names that we use are not Angular components, rather they are custom elements and should not throw an exception. We can do this by adding a schemas uh, property here to the ng module configuration. This is an array and in here we'll import the uh, custom element schema. Uh, here we get an unnecessarily long import. We can just get it from Angular core. In addition to that, while we're in here, I'm going to install or import the reactive forms module because that's something that we will use in the form later on. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, using custom elements or web components at all. We need to import that. The next thing that we want to do is add support for older browsers. So even though most browsers these days come with native support for web components, there are still people using older browsers that we want to be able to support. We can do that by loading something called a polyfill. A polyfill is essentially a piece of JavaScript code that emulates all the APIs that are not implemented natively in a browser. There's a project called Web Components JS that ships a loader script, which will do feature detection on a user's browser and only load uh, the polyfills that it needs. Because this is a dynamic loader script, we're not able to uh, import it the same way as we do here, because Webpack would essentially break it. So instead, what we will do is we'll copy it over uh, to our uh, distribution folder and then we'll load it from our index file. So in order to copy it over we will go into the angular json file here and in the assets array we'll define what to copy. So we'll, first of all we'll define a glob which will be the pattern that we should uh, copy. So all JS files. Input will be in the node modules folder and then where we want to put this. And for this to work, we need to install this dependency. So open up a console. All right, close that. Oops, didn't mean to cut it out. All right, so this looks good. We will then go into our index file and use the loader. So what I'm doing here is I have a script tag for the web components loader script. And then optionally, uh, based on feature detection, I'm loading a custom elements ES5 adapter, which is needed in case you're transpiling your code down to ES5 for older browsers as well. So we'll save that, and then we'll start up the server. You can do that with ng-serve. Okay. And then we'll go into the browser refresh and we should see uh, that the application gets served. If we go into the development tools here and look at the network while we're refreshing, we should see this uh, web components loader getting loaded. Okay, so now we're ready to actually start using these. 
let's go into our app component and import all the components that we're using. And in addition to the components themselves, since we are building a form, we need to import uh, form group and form control from Angular Forms. I'm going to save uh, the people that we edit in a person object. We'll define a constructor and we'll have a public first name, which will be a string, and then we'll have a public last name, which will also be a string. And then we need the curly brackets there. Here inside of our app component, I'm going to remove everything that was there from before. I will define an array of these person objects, which will be our data model. and initialize it to an empty array. Then I will define the form. As a new form group here, we will have two form controls, one for first name and one for last name. Like that. And then we'll define a method on our app component here for adding people. Call add person. Here, what we want to do is create a new array containing the new person based on the inputs in the first name and last name fields. So this.people equals to a new array containing all the previous people we had. and then a new person object that has this dot form dot value dot first name and last name like that okay so we've created a new array containing the new person and then we can call uh, reset on the form to clear out the uh, clear out the values from there. That should take care of most of the logic for our application. The remaining thing that we need to do is define the HTML for our view. So we'll go into our HTML file here. We can remove everything that we had from before. We'll start by creating a form, and our form will. First of all, bind to a form group that we defined. It'll be the form. And then we'll bind the ng submit event to the add person method. Okay. Inside of this form, I will create the text fields and the button. For the text fields, I will define a label, which will be the input prompt, essentially. I will also define the form control name, so what, which form control this should map to. Oops. So we'll define the form control name, should be equal to first name. And then the only kind of uh, specific thing about using web components in a form is that we need to tell Angular to use this text field just as a normal uh, HTML input field. We can do that by defining ng default control on it. All right, and then we'll do the same thing for last name. And finally, add the button. for adding, and this will bind the click event to calling add person as well. Okay, so that takes care of our form. The other part of our UI is the grid. 
the grid, we will bind to that array of people that we defined. We do that by binding to the items property, like that. And then inside here, we define how the properties on these objects should map to our columns. So we can go back to our bottom.com web page here and copy over some of the example code. Put it right in here. The only difference here is that our path is not a nested path. Instead, we just used first name and last name, so we'll change that. Like that. And if everything went well, we should be able to go into our browser now, reload the application here, and try it out. So I'll put in my name here. Hit add and it gets displayed here. We'll add something else and it gets displayed here as well. All right, that is pretty much it. So you can see that you can use uh, web components very much the same way as any other Angular components, just as long as you import them and then uh, use them in your application. There are some specific cases like uh, using custom elements inside of forms where you need to either define a ng default control if you're using a text input, or then you could use a library called origami, which makes it easier for you to bind to all kinds of different selects and radio button groups and things like that. In general, I recommend that you can use web components as the leaf nodes in your application, so kind of these reusable components. I wouldn't use web components to define views or any other kind of bigger composite components in your application that's better left to whatever framework you're using, for instance, Angular in our case here. All right, thanks for watching.